I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. I see this going one of two ways. Number one, Cardi B sees my dress and she's so overcome with appreciation for my appreciation for her that she does like an entire dedicated Instagram story tagging me, telling me how much she loves me. I then screen record that entire thing, save it, put it on a thumb drive and I'm buried with it. She and I then become best friends and our love affair begins. Option two, she sees it, she thinks I look like some sad 99 cent store version of her. She's offended I would even attempt to accomplish her fabulousness. She makes fun of me on social media. I then have to crawl into a hole and die. I have been told that there is a third option, which is that she never sees it and she doesn't care. I'm really hoping for option A though. I love her so much. <laughs> Welcome to the DIY Designer, happy Friday. If this is your first video, my name is Orly Shani. It's so nice to have you here, thanks for joining me. Today is a fantastic episode because today we are recreating this killer Cardi B bandana dress. <laughs> she won't like that dance, I'm gonna stop doing that. It is such a cool dress. First of all, it looks amazing on her. Body looks amazing. I love the shape of it. I love the ombre sort of going light to dark and dark to light of each of the bandanas. This designer is so talented and I ended up going on the website and finding all of these amazing different pieces that I was like, God damn. Really, really cool, super talented. Now I wanna go ahead and thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Guys, I wanna explain two really important distinctions between Skillshare and YouTube and why I really, really recommend Skillshare. Number one, the most important thing, I've got two months free for you. So you've got absolutely nothing to lose. So while I'm talking, just keep that in mind, two months free with the link below. The issue that I have with YouTube is, number one, I can bounce around forever looking for the specific thing I wanna learn. I don't know if the person is any good. I don't know if the video is gonna be any good. I don't know if it's reliable. Once I learn that one thing, then I've gotta go search, find the next step. Same process, find the next step. With Skillshare, you know that this is an expert. They've been vetted by Skillshare. They develop out a full course that has multiple classes within it so that you're gonna learn it from top to bottom. Let me show you one of my favorite courses that I just did this last week. The course that I got super into this time is actually this Modern Money Habits. What I like is that he talks about your personal snapshot, really looking at your uh, finances from your assets to your income, your expenses, and your debt, and really getting an accurate view of how much money you're actually making. He talks about the difference between like your gross income and your net income. And it's one of those things we always forget. We think we make a certain amount, but once your healthcare and your taxes and all those things are taken out, we're making a lot less than we think, but we're spending off of that gross income number. A really hot button issue right now, especially during the pandemic, is the renting versus buying conversation. He breaks this down in a way that completely changes my perspective. When you're thinking about renting versus buying, there's all of these numbers that we don't add into the buying portion of it. And so people are making decisions that aren't actually best for them just because they sound good. Take a look at all of the classes within this course. I mean, it really is a full overview of modern money management and so important for us to be thinking about right now. I love this course too by Plated. There's a whole knife skills course, which teaches you how to be a better chef at home. And we're doing so much cooking from home. So this is a fantastic one. Another one that I really love is this interior design one. Right now we're spending so much time at home. So you can really redecorate your space. So these classes are really useful. Get that two months free. You have nothing to lose. All you have to do is click the link down below, put in your email address. You'll create a membership for free for two months of premium. You're gonna love it. You're not gonna regret it. Uh, but in the meantime, Time, I am gonna teach you how to make this Cardi B dress and you can trust me because you know it's gonna be good. All right, so the materials that you need for this are a packet of multicolored 100% cotton bandanas, a bustier, a dress form, and a needle and thread. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the bustier as the structure to build this entire thing on, very similar to my beaded bustier hack. Now, Basically, the entire process here is trial and error. It is super personal to you. It's which colors you wanna use, what shape you wanna create. Just take a look at all of the patterns within your bandana and try to focus on creating the most flattering shape you possibly can. This is not the version I end up doing, but I'm gonna share with you kind of all of the different iterations. I'm basically just taking each bandana, putting it onto the bustier, and starting to create flattering like pin tucks and pleats and things that I think are gonna look really nice. 
You wanna make sure that you're always pinning it directly to the bustier and not to the actual dress form because you wanna be able to take this off and try it on and then hand sew it. Now really all you're gonna do is start balancing color and shape and you can actually build the whole thing on this bustier. Because it's a little bit longer, all I have to do is attach some of them to the bottom and that creates my skirt. Now I wasn't loving how kind of color blocky it was, how strong the color was. I really like how Cardi B's has this sort of ombre effect and it fades in and out, which I think is super cool. So I took all of the bandanas off my dress, went outside and I'm using one of those misting spray bottles. You do not wanna use like a squirty spray bottle. You wanna use the one that's the continuous mist because it essentially airbrushes it. I put a little bit of bleach with water and as I airbrush it, you can see it creates a really gorgeous like ombre faded effect. Some of the colors are going to need a little bit more than others so just do a second pass on it. Once they're done you're going to rinse them out in a sink and then just chuck them all in the wash. You can wash all of the colors together. This is what they end up looking like. It's such a cool tone. So the next morning, I just sort of put them all up on my dress form so I could get a sense of color. Which colors did I want to do together? Did I want a really light spring version? Did I want deeper tones? This is really all about you creating what you want. I will say one thing I really recommend is tying two bandanas together on the shoulder to create a really nice V-neck shape. I decided I wanted that V-neck shape on both sides and you'll see later how I kind of alternate it. I'm basically just playing around. You tie it, you look at it. At this point, I thought maybe I would do that little shoulder thing that she has there. Well, not shoulder, it goes like around her arm. So that's what I did on some of them. I thought like I could twist the back into a skinny little thing. I could open it. I mean, really this is trial and error and just playing. I put it on and I was like, Ugh. I just wasn't digging it. The way that the colors were playing together, I wasn't really liking. Even that lime green one, where I placed the bleached out part because it's lighter and the way shadows and highlights played almost made me look pregnant. Like it created a bigger shape, which I didn't want. I didn't really like the way the thing was looking over the arm. And so this is what I end up coming up with. I tied the black one and kind of alternated it so that the tie is sort of center front. And then on the other side, I had the side, the tie in the back. These pieces that are on the bottom are gonna overlap when I actually wear them so that it will create coverage and I'll have a perfectly covered skirt and you're not gonna see my booty. Now basically, once you come up with your design, whatever you decide to do, this is the point when you're gonna start to tack it all down. Now I really, really recommend hand sewing as much of this while it's on the dress form as possible. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're going in and out, in and out, creating tiny little tacks on the outside and then doing skipping like big stitches on the inside. You really don't need to tack as much of this down as you would think. The shape of it is really gonna hold it into place. So basically all I'm doing is tacking it down all along the top and I'm skipping like every inch, only coming out for a tiny tack so you don't see my stitches. I'm also using a clear thread, that way I can just keep going and I don't need to swap out my thread with each new color. Now again, you're gonna do just basically all along the bust line and then going down the back. You're not gonna worry about the center pin tucks, we're gonna do that afterwards. I get to the back here, and this part's really important. You wanna make sure that you keep the bustier hooked because this back section is where my bustier actually has some stretch, it's elastic. If I were to unhook it, the elastic would collapse, right? It would shrink up and get smaller and I would end up not sewing all of my bandanas into the right place and when I put it on, it would pop. So you wanna make sure to hand sew it while it's connected and once you tack down the majority of it, this is when you can unhook it so that you can more easily get your hand inside and kinda of have a little bit more flexibility. But just make sure that you do the majority of it while it's hooked together, that way it's gonna fit you properly. And this is also when we're gonna do the skirt. Now, one cool option would be to just safety pin the bandanas for the skirt part. All of the top front layers are gonna hide it, which means you could turn this into a top and a skirt with just a couple of safety pins, which is really fun. I was hand sewing this on, so basically what I'm doing is getting as close to the hook and eyes as possible and tacking it into place. I'm doing the same thing with the pink, big looping stitches. It really doesn't matter. You're not gonna see this because those top layers are gonna fold down over it. Once you finish the top bust line and the bottom skirt, you're gonna take it off the dress form. Everything is now secure. It's not gonna move on you. And all you're gonna do now is really tack down those beautiful pleats that you made for yourself. Now, I will say one amazing thing about these 100% cotton bandanas is that they, like, just your hand can almost create 
create like a pleat if you wanted to. That's why using fabric glue would be a really cool option if you guys wanna do that. You would basically apply fabric glue anywhere that you hand sewed it, tacking it on. You need a lot less than you think because again, they're tied up on the shoulders on both sides. So you really just need to make sure that they stay nice and taut around the bust. But what I'm doing here is just hand sewing each of these little pin tucks down. That way I have that really beautiful shape and I've got all those really pretty pleats that create a flattering shape on my body. Now, all I had to do was press it. You know, this pink one was originally tied up on the shoulder in one version, so it's got a lot of wrinkles in it. So just grab your iron, flatten out anything that looks wrinkled from your previous versions or your previous tests. And then I do recommend pressing all of those beautiful pleats in the front down so that they're like smooth and they hug your body and they create really beautiful shape. But basically that's it, the dress is done. I thought it would be super fun to do a purse the person, her photo is so cool and obviously like very legit, but I thought let's do a DIY version, at least for the photo. So I'm taking my white one because I thought that's something I'd actually use again. I'm centering it and I'm just gonna use tacky spray. It's like a really lightweight misting spray and because these bandanas are so lightweight, this is plenty to hold it into place. So I missed it on the bottom and kind of center it. And now when I pulled it up to tuck it in, there's like a little, um, it's a part of the purse that sort of blocks it from going in. So I had to cut a tiny piece off. So I did that, I just trimmed it off. Now I'm gonna pull it super taut. Pull, 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 use your fingers to hold it in place and then fold it down. It fits perfectly because I cut that little triangle off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. This side can go all the way in so I don't bother cutting anything, but there is a little like, toggle that's part of the purse and so I need to cut open a hole so the toggle can still work. Now on the sides you're gonna do it just like a purse. I mean um, excuse me just like a present the way you wrap a present. You kind of fold the corners into a triangle, fold that top down and it's really just about making smooth edges. This is gonna be sort of specific to your purse but you can see I'm really just trying to finagle everything so that it lays as flat and as clean as possible. Light mist of spray and you can see you got really nice shape. Now this little point, I did use fabric glue because I needed to pull it super, super tight and make sure it stayed into place. So two little lines of fabric glue and you guys, I'm done. I'm done with all of it. I can't wait to show you what this whole situation looks like on I Love You Cardi B.